Hello and welcome to a Cloudasta Google training series for Google Vault for admins. My name is Nick Marchese. Uh, today we're going to talk all about Google Vault, what it is, how it works, and give you a little bit of a demo on how to get things going. So let's dive right in. What can Google Vault protect? So Vault can protect most of the things within your Google workspace uh, from Gmail, uh, to Drive, to Meet, to Sites, and so on. So two ways you can access Vault. So you can use the Apps Launcher uh, and look for that Vault icon that looks like a little bit of a lock Vault there. We'll show you how to do this in a little bit. Or you could just go to vault.google.com. So there are some licensing requirements that come with uh, Google Vault. So a user must have a, a Google Workspace license and a Vault license. Vault licenses are included in uh, select SKUs. Uh, you see a couple that are listed there, um, and it could also be an add-on for other SKUs. So check what uh, license you have and what SKU you have to see if you have a Vault for your domain. If Vault is included in your edition, all the users in your organization are automatically assigned a license. If it's an add-on, you can buy Vault licenses for some or all of your users. Uh, only users with the licenses are covered by Vault. If they do not have a license, they are not covered by Vault. Um, and if you delete a user or a license, their da data may be purged and no longer available in Vault. So just be careful when deleting users or removing licenses. All right. Uh, information governance. So you, the big purpose of Vault is that you can help retain and delete the data that needs to be retained and deleted. So keeping data for as long as you need it. Um, you probably have a organization um, retention policy of how long you need to be preserving data for. Um, so the data will remain in Vault available uh, even if a user deletes it and empties their trash. That's the beauty of Vault. Um, and also you being able to delete sensitive data after a certain set of time. Um, so that way there is not data that you is, that's lingering around that you didn't want to stay there for too long. This is all configurable within Google Vault. So the Vault retention rules are really important because um, they directly apply to all of the apps within the supported Google services. Um, Vault is not a data archive. Once those retention rules expire, that data will be purged. Um, we need to be careful of that because you, the, that data can't be recovered by a user or an admin. Vault doesn't retain data until you set up those retention rules. So if you haven't set those up yet, they're not happening. Um, until you do, users can still delete and purge data. So two types of retention rules. There's the default retention rules, which apply to all licensed accounts in your organization. Those are the ones we'll focus on at first. And then there are also custom retention rules you could set up for a certain uh, area of time for a certain OU, um, depending on what you want to go ahead and make sure that you're customizing with when it comes to preserving your data. So if you want to go ahead and set something up specifically for uh, a certain OU or group within Gmail or Drive, you could do that here. With Vault, authorized users can search for data, put a hold on data, and export data. Uh, Vault supports the first steps of the e-discovery process outlined by the electronic discovery reference model, identification, preservation, and collection. Now let's walk through that. Identification, you could search for your, your organization's workspace data by user, organizational unit, date, keyword, and you could preview messages, attachments, and so on. To preserve data indefinitely for legal or other retention obligations, you could put a hold on accounts, organizational units, so on and so forth. Uh, if a workspace admin deletes a user's account, the user's data is no longer available in Vault and cannot be restored. If you want to put a hold or retain a user's data, the user must both have a Google Workspace and Vault license. So you need to make sure that if you want to retain data for on a user's account, that that account does not get deleted. So here's some data that is protected by a hold. I will pause here and I'll let you read through that for anything that might stand out. You notice it's ranging from Gmail all the way to Google Voice, and there's a couple of things there in between. 
Okay, and then collection. After you search for your data and find what you need, you can export it for processing and analysis. Uh, this is a copy of all the data that matches your search, some metadata that might go along with it, and so on and so forth. Um, a data export is available in a vault for 15 days, and then the export is deleted to protect that data. So if you are uh, exporting some data, it's recommended that you get that out of there uh, sooner than later so you don't forget about it. You can control who can access Vault and what actions are available to them. This ensures that only authorized users have access to the organization's data. So you can turn Vault on for select OUs, assign those admin privileges to those people. Um, and Vault also provides an audit log of user activity. So that way you know what's going on uh, when it comes to changing retention rules, running searches, and most importantly, exporting data. Okay, so we're gonna demo a little bit here. So we're gonna talk about how to get to uh, Vault via the uh, icon, the app launcher, and vault.google.com. We'll talk about different retention rules, default, custom, and some settings. We'll talk about some matters for finding things. And then we'll talk about the audit log. Okay, let's jump over. So if we wanted to go from my drive and use the app launcher, we could just go to the top right here, the Google apps. We could scroll on down and look for our vault icon here. Also, I could just go to a new tab and type vault.google.com. And it brings me to this page that looks like this. We're gonna go from the top down. So if we go to retention, these are those retention rules we were talking about. So I have these retention rules on right now. Um, and you can see for all of these different services, they're on as indefinitely, and there is no expiration. So if we wanted to change those, I can go into one of these, and I could change it from indefinitely, it might have been set to off, and you could set up a retention period. You could say how many days, whether that's 180 days, uh, 365 days, whatever makes sense to you. Um, and the start of that period is the date when the data is sent or received. In this case, this is for Google Voice. And then keeping in mind uh, these options here. So what should happen after that expiration? So we purge only the data that's already been deleted or purge all of the data more than 180 days. Keeping in mind, this might not be deleted data. So let's use another example here. If I go to Gmail and I change this to a retention period instead of indefinitely, notice these actions after expiration. The actions could be purge only permanently deleted messages. So this would purge, um, let's, put, let's make up a thing for, that says 365. So any uh, messages that have been permanently deleted by a user that are more than a year old will be purged. Now, if we, you were to check the second box, it says purge messages from Gmail mailboxes and permanently deleted messages. This rule purges drafts. So this would mean that any emails, even if it's in the user's inbox, would be purged after a year. That's, that Be really, really careful if you check that box that you actually mean to be checking that box. All right, so here are those default rules. Those are gonna apply to everything. Let's talk about our custom rules. Custom rules here, let's go ahead and create a new one. So first thing I do is I could choose a service. Let's go to Drive. I'm gonna hit continue. I could choose a certain organizational unit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick next special OU. I'm gonna hit continue. And then I could select the duration. So I could have it on indefinitely. I could set up a retention period similar to what we were looking at before. I'm gonna hit create. And then if I go in uh, to a different one that like Gmail, you see that I have something called conditions. This way, if I wanted to go ahead and have a very specific custom retention rule that is only uh, keeping things that are set within a certain date period um, or that have certain terms, I could do that within uh, a Gmail custom retention rule. And then some settings here uh, for Google Meet and Sites. Um, do you wanna have uh, these uh, retention rules based off of the meet rules or the drive rules, similar to Google Sites. Do you wanna have the uh, retention rules based off of the sites rules or drive rules? You might want those to all be the same and it'll be a little bit easier for redundancy purposes to have them as the drive rules, but you might want them to be different. 
Okay, let's go on to matters and start searching. So um, I'm going to, uh, you see we have a couple different matters here. Matters are essentially uh, a case where you start searching for something. I'm gonna make a new case, I'm gonna hit create. I'm gonna create a new matter here. I'm gonna make it uh, called uh, uh, recipe uh, search. Cause I know I have some recipe files somewhere. So I'm going to search in drive. Um, I'm gonna look in specific accounts. I'm gonna look in my specific account. But you could also say, I wanna search within organizational units, share drives, site, so on and so forth. But I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, mine for right now. And do I wanna include items from share drives that I'm a part of? You could toggle this on if you like, or you could leave it off. Um, you could select your time zone. You could go ahead and add a date modified if you wanna go ahead and filter down more. And then you could add in some terms here. You could see there's uh, some examples here, like you could do a, something here with a condition that says type document and the owner, and then whatever the username is, that's one example. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave uh, type document and I'm gonna put in the, word, the keyword recipe. Um, before I hit search, you can see some advanced options here. Is there a version um, that has a date there that you wanna add on there? So right now I am searching on for the nick at test.cloudhouse.com account for any documents that have the term recipe in it. I hit search. And I can see here, uh, I have one file that comes up that's called secret recipe. It was last modified a while ago. So what I can do here, I can get a preview of this by clicking it and I can see my secret recipe here. Maybe it's all in white font. Um, and if I want to um, maybe change the terms uh, of my search, I could hit the little edit button here or hit the edit here and go back and maybe I wanna go ahead and um, maybe change it to an organizational unit or I wanna check out share drives. I can do that all here. And when I'm done, if, I'm, if I found what I want, I could also hit export to export that. And it, what it will do is I can name my export uh, secret recipe neck. Um, and I got a couple options here. I could toggle those on or off if I like. Um, notice here it says download your export promptly because it's deleted after 15 days. That's what we talked about before. Hit export. It'll go ahead and get that export set up for us. I can hit the view if I want and see how that's going. This is preparing. I'm gonna go back to my search here for a second. If I wanted to save this query, the search, and do it again later, I could hit save. You know, I'm looking for secret recipe and that query will be saved um, and I can go ahead and pull it in later. So I'm gonna go over to my export and see that's still going. So that give it a little bit of time. Um, while that's happening, uh, we can notice I can sit, go over here into holds and I can add a hold. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, adding holds uh, for things that might be uh, sensitive and we need to retain. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. I'm gonna hit create. Uh, I'm gonna create a whole name, uh, keep the secret recipe. It's gonna be the name of my hold. I'm gonna choose my service, I'm gonna go to drive. Um, and then what's the scope? I'm gonna look on Nick's account, okay. Okay, now uh, anything uh, on that account is going to be uh, held and retained. So you can see here now my export is all set. I can hit download or I can delete it when I'm done. Um, and I can also go to audit and I can get an audit of all of the activity that I just did um, by uh, toggling on if I wanna see if I, what my searches were, what my exports were, so on and so forth. Um, and hitting a download CSV and I can see all of those details there. All right, let's go back to matters. All right, we could see some stuff here. This is where we got started. Let's go into our recipe search one more time. Uh, I also want to set up a, another hold within email. I'm going to show you some more details, kind of like our customer retention rules. So if I go into create, um, I'm going to keep, uh, keep secret emails. 
Uh, I'm going to choose my service. And what I could do now is I get that conditions field that shows up. I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to look for my test account. And now I'm going to add in uh, to keep any emails that have the term recipe in it. So, uh, and hit create. So what this is doing is it's setting up another hold just for the Nick at uh, test.cladasta account. Um, and any emails that have the term recipe in it will be retained. Maybe you have some other emails that you want to go ahead and make sure are retained in there. Um, that could be uh, a really helpful thing to add that hold in there as well. Okay, I'm going to go all the way back to our homepage here. Uh, and then our last thing is reports. So this should look fairly similar, this audit. What this is going to do is it's going to show me um, any uh, activity that's been happening within Vault. I can look for specific users within the date range. Um, I can select which type of activity actions I want to look at. You can select them all, you can select none of them, you can select one. I'm going to hit that download CSV and you'll get that audit log of what's been happening. Okay, let's look at a couple other places where we can set up some more holds. So um, a, we don't have any domain holds that are set up. This would be if we were setting, uh, making sure that stuff within the entire domain was being um, not deleted. Um, and this would show any user holds that are set up. You notice here, we set up two user holds for the nick at test.classa.com account. Um, we have two here. Um, and if we click that, we can get a better sense of what those are. You can um, actually see there are three holds, uh, two that we did today and one that I did uh, a while ago where I was retaining uh, any emails on that account and the subject was donuts. And then if we had any uh, holds that were set up based off of groups, those would show up here in our reports. Okay. So that is the basic overview of Google Vault. Um, so uh, really quick uh, reminders of things to do right when you get started. Make sure your retention rules are set up. Google Vault isn't doing anything until you have these retention rules set up. Be careful of setting it up as anything other than indefinitely because things will be purged ruthlessly according to that duration period that you set up. So please be careful when setting up those rules. If you're not sure, uh, lean longer um, or set it up indefinitely until you know what you need to go ahead and scale it back to. You can set up your custom rules on there and then setting up matters, go hit create is where you're going to go ahead and start searching for things, um, exporting things and saving them. Hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions for us, you could always email us at webinars at and we'd be happy to help.